morning everybody so i would like to discuss some security risks for working from home especially these days we work from home and so we heavily use email as you may aware email are postcard written in pencil why i do so, why i say so so you know when you get a postcard anyone can read it anyone can alter because it's written in pencil so anyone can write a postcard as anyone else so email is the same so if i want to write email as you i can do it just need to do a few configuration if i want to access your email there are methods to do so so especially email service providers are uh, reading your email content so how do you kind of how how do you kind of provide a uh, security for the email communication if not so when we are using email for our office activities uh, someone might uh, get an opportunity to keep as on trouble so what i would like to discuss uh, and demonstrate you how to configure a uh, existing regular email system uh, to use for a serious activity so in in principle when you use the information our information are in three stages so we call the map information address in transit and in use so usually emails are when you work with the email our emails are stayed in all these three stages so email store in the server email store in our machine perhaps Uh, so we need to protect the email address so then email transfer from our machine to someone else machine so email need to be protected in transit similarly email protected should be protected in use regular online email service providers such as gmail and yahoo they protect your email most of the time in transit but you don't know what happen uh, if they are addressed so especially those service providers access in them malicious parties who get access to your email folders may folders may access them and plus the documents especially confidential documents uh, when you want to exchange them so we we never know who is going to access those documents so especially when you use uh, uh, financial documents maybe in the university's examination results we need to be careful so practically there are two security standards exist to protect email communication or the email system those two standards call it as secure mind and pretty good privacy as my is kind of an international standard which supports by most of the offline email clients unfortunately in order to configure as my with our mail system we must use offline client but nowadays we are using online email systems such as google and yahoo to do our day to day communication so in addition to this mine there is a other per standard available to protect the email that particular it has pretty good privacy or the pgp so with the pgp we can personally get involved and protect our communication emails as text messages plus e attachments of those emails basically those two systems use a uh, cryptographic algorithms what we call it as public key cryptography algorithms to handle that so i am not going to discuss that instead i am showing you how to improve 
our typical online email system such as Gmail and Yahoo to get secure email. As I mentioned in these two standards, so what I concentrate on the PGP, particular privacy, uh, the PGP has implemented by several people. It's implemented, it, most of the time, the PGP tools are open source. It's implemented by community for the community. So it's, these standards and the software are not controlled by any government or any official organization. So we have a freedom to use, the, use it in our application. So mainly, the main, main reference implementation of PGP is called it as GNU PGP. So most of the Linux based, Unix based operating system has the software installed called GPG to use this GNU PGP. People who are familiar with the command line interfaces or CLI can easily use this GPG or the implementation of PGP mail system. So most of us who now work at home are not so familiar with terminal or what you call CLI. So we have to, if we want to practically use PGP, we need to get some kind of simple system which everybody can use. So the right now, so there are simple nice software, what we call add-on available for existing browsers, which we can use for uh, PGP encrypted or protected messages. So that uh, add-on or the plugin is called it as mail analog plugin. So you can visit this mail analog website and add those plugins to your browser. It supports Chrome, Brave, Firefox, or most of the existing browsers. After that, you could use your regular mail system to send protected emails. I will demonstrate this so you can do it yourself for your activity. First of all, if you want to use that, first thing you have to do is visit this www.mailanalog.com website and add this plugin into your browser. So after that, what you have to do is generate keys. You have to generate two keys, what we call it as public and private key. So public key is used for encryption and the private key used for decryption. So for example, if I want to get some confidential document from party called X, so I have to send my public key to X. So then X can use that pub public key to encrypt the information to me. And then I could access this information by decrypting it by using my private key. Since I am the person who only has access to my private key, so I am the person who can read it. No one else can read it. Even email service providers cannot read it. So I will take some example to show you how it works. And then I will practically show you how to configure it. Okay, let's say I am Kasun, as email address Kasun did so gmail.com, wants to email a PDF document which has examination results. Nowadays, we want to extend that to such document. We are usually put a password to this document, and then we send the document by email, and then we SMS the password, and then we need to uh, view the SMS, enter this SMS to access those, access those documents, and so on. And with different parties, we have to use different passwords. It's really a mess. So sometimes we confuse with the password, sometimes we send the documents without forgetting the password, and sometimes we forget the passwords and so on. So if you use this, the system which I'm going to demonstrate, we can overcome this hazard. So what we should do first is create public private key pair. After that, we need to share that. For example, I am Kazun who wants to send a PDF file. By the way, the system can use to send any file. It, not limit to PDF or the word. Any file, if you want to protect, PGP can be used. So 
I, I first thing I have to create public private key pair. And let's assume some, some person called Nandisa has email address husbandy at yahoo.com uh, wants to get that file. So in other words, I have exam results to be sent to Nandika. So then what should I do is I should instruct this Nandika to send this public key to me. So then I create my document, put it in my working directory, and then encrypt that using the public key of Nandika. So obviously I need to access the public key first. So then after that, this encrypted document with the public key of my recipient, that is Nandika, is emailed to her. Then, so after she receives that document, she can open that using his private key. She, since she only has access to her private key, she can only open that. Even the email service providers cannot open it. Because of that, we say this provide end-to-end -end security from sender to the recipient. So let's say somehow uh, someone get access to this file. If they access to that, he cannot read that file because he don't have access or malicious person do not have access to malicious persons do not have access to this uh, private key, her private key. So for example, let's say using some man in the middle attack, somebody has taken a, a, a Google password. So this malicious guy might use his machine uh, to log into her account. So he will see all the attachments or whatever confidential files. Uh, this malicious guy see that, but he cannot open that because this malicious guy at his computer may not have access to the private key of her, him, her. So as you see, that is very good protection. So with that, what you have to protect is the private key, our private key. So for example, the Nandika should make sure to protect her private key. So she can use the password to protect that and she can store that private key in his browser. So only she knows that and its machine has that. So we, we are quite sure she is accessing it. No one else is accessing it. So she can use same public key to send anybody. So all the people who after protect this document, she access those documents with a single private key. So he don't need to use different, different passwords. He don't need to SMS those passwords like that. So it's very convenient. So I will show you a demo how to use that. So you may realize that it's convenient and hope you will start using that. Okay, so let me share the uh, uh, desktop uh, to show the uh, demo. Right. Uh, so I will first of all I will use uh, uh, I will use two browsers. Assume the Nandika or the person who wants to receive uh, my uh, receive a confidential document. I use uh, uh, Yahoo email account and uh, mail uh, uh, the Firefox browser. So what you should first do, you have to install this plugin called Mail Analog. So you can visit this website, mailanalog.com, and install this plugin. So you press Install Plugin, and you say Add to the Firefox. In a similar way, you can visit to that uh, website with any browser, if that plugin support this browser, it will give a button to add to the browser. So you can add it, right. Uh, so after you add it, you can see a small icon on the uh, toolbar on the browser. So you now you are ready to use. So maybe I will visit uh, so this uh, email. Uh, so we I set up an email called Kasundi. I, let's assume this is uh, email of the uh, lady we, we in our use case. So uh, now what she should do, 
he should create public private key pairs for use in his system and email her private key to me for that first after install the plugin she go to this menu and let's say let's start and then generate public private key uh, so she put her name and his email address her email address here like that and there are some advanced options you don't need to think about it they said before so name and email address the email address must be correct email address and enter a good passphrase uh, to protect your private key your private key is generated locally and store as your local browser protected with this passphrase so that may never leave from your computer and there is a small tag using this tick you can upload your public key automatically to the key distribution server so then your senders can fetch them from the server so that is uh, some, somewhat si simple but i advise not to do so so you unclick that why i advise not to do so because if you upload your public keys to those servers you should upload your email together with that so then there are spam boards available which search for this uh, online pgp servers which we upload our keys to collect the emails so then it as a end result you might get spam so don't upload that maybe you personally can exchange the public key okay you pick that and you say you untick that this upload button and you say generate keys uh, system will generate two key public private keys for you it's created by the browser itself and stored those both keys at the browser those keys never leave from your computer so so no one have access to those keys so after you created this key you see those key pair has created now so now you can take your public key out and send that public key to cousin. So, so for that, you have to export your public key. So you see, when you click that export button, export button here, you get your public key here. So then you say save. And it may save into a download uh, folder. So you go to the download folder and then uh, you may, it's better you rename that uh, with your uh, email address. Then you know this public key is you. Hi. So then you can use any method, any, other, any method to distribute this public key. Maybe you can use a, a Google Drive and share this public key through the drive or you can send it using a mail. So maybe I will send it using a mail. Uh, so I go to my mailbox and compose a message. You need to do this action only once. And I want to talk to this person, this, uh, this, uh, with this email. So I say, this is my public key. And I attach the public key which I created to the mail and sends that. So like that, you can share your public key with the people who would intend to send confidential document to you, right? So this action need to be done only once. After that, you can use this key to exchange any confidential document at uh, forever kind of until uh, you want like forever you can use the same public key right assume now i'm cousin who wants to communicate send the exam document or the uh, maybe exam marks to nandika the person and now she has sent her public key to me so you see i received the public key by the way in cousin has already downloaded uh, the mail analog plugin to the Chrome browser and he has already created keys.
So there are some keys actually I created uh, uh, for my uh, for my previous demonstration. So I will uh, kind of delete those keys. Otherwise, you may get confused. So these are the two private public keys I I created uh, uh, in this plugin for my two mail accounts, is cousin B and uh, cousin at UCSC. So I have those in my mailbox. I'm sorry, in my plugin. Right. So then, after I receive uh, this key, uh, uh, I already installed the plugin, as you see. So what you should do is just uh, click on the key. So you see, when you click on the key, the mail envelope plugin automatically identify it as a, it is a public key of my recipient and pop up that plugin. So then you, know, you press here, so the key will be automatically imported. You can check that email address, whether that email address, the person we intend to communicate. If so, I confirm. So then my public key is added into my key store. Right, so I am done now. This is kind of end of the key exchange phase. Right, now I want to uh, encrypt or the protect some document which has uh, perhaps exam results. Assume I have uh, uh, exam results uh, in a PDF form stored here. Uh, so no, no, let's see, uh, this is, this is some mark sheet where I want to share uh, with uh, uh, this Nandika for my example, right? I kind of put my signature electronically using PDF sign feature here. So this mark sheet is ready. Uh, to, so I want to send it to, securely send it to my recipe. So then only she can access that. So then what should I do? It's in this uh, mail envelope plugin uh, you, I press this mail and log plugin, hash phone, right? From that, I press the encryption tab. So with the encryption tab, I put the recipient name. So what I want to send the email to her. So I already have a uh, 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 public key. So I press the email address here. In case I have multiple recipients, I can pick them here like that. I can pick uh, uh, pick all the recipients. So all these public key of, of those recipients, I must pre-install as I demonstrated. So then what should I do? So then I just uh, upload the file which I want to protect like that. So then file has added to the system. So in addition to the encryption, if I want, I can digitally sign that using my private key so you see, I say it's digitally signed. So digital signatures are legally valid even in Sri Lanka. Uh, so you can add the digital signatures if you wish. Otherwise, you say remove signatures. So so you after you upload the file, so if you want, you remove the signatures. Better you keep the signatures and add the signature as well, electronic signature as well, to your document we just uploaded uh, and entry. So. So you don't need to worry about when you put that, it may not upload it to any server. So when you use some PDF documents uh, to do some actions like electronic signing actions, there are so many PDF tools available, online services available. So there you need to upload that documents into their servers. So that violate the confidentiality and our privacy. So in this plugin, may not do that. You see this URL is local URL, it's a plugin URL which is everything handled local. So you say encrypt. So after it, encry after it press the encrypt button, it asks a passphrase uh, to access my private key. Since I said, please sign it as well. Otherwise, you don't need to give a, pa a, a, a password to access the private key. So I have given it. So it's created, signed and encrypted or the protected uh, document where I can share with uh, my recipient call uh, uh, here, uh, Nandika. So her email address I have given like that. Okay. So how can I share? So simply I download that document and 
maybe I can share it using my Google Drive. So maybe I can have a create a document called Welcome or whatever, and then I can upload that file uh, uh, which I created and downloaded. So so this is the file. It's called as GPG. So I upload it to the folder and share this folder. Maybe I share this folder using uh, this uh, Google sharing buttons, or else that's one method, or else I can just email it. So I go to my email and I compose an email message to her, like that. Uh, and attach it. Attach this message. So I don't want to put any passwords or anything to protect this document because no one can access it. After it's protected, only my recipient can access that because I protected to her. Then I sense that to her. So then in my demo she used a Gmail. Doesn't matter which mail. So you go there. So she see okay there was she received the exam results document. Yeah now she wants to access. So actually no she cannot preview here because it's protected document. A Gmail may not support that. So what you should do is you download that. Right? And then you go to the plugin dashboard and say go to the encryption button and press decrypt. And you pick the document which you downloaded. This is the document which actually downloaded and you just dropped here and say decrypt. So when you say decrypt, the system asks the password to access your private key. The private key is stored locally. Nothing will go to any server. It's all process is local and the system automatically decrypt that file. So you just download it and save it and you see you get the file. So we don't need to do any password protections or whatever. So it's purely protected. This file is kind of protected. So you access the file. So you see it simplify this password based file protection. It's very inconvenient. So at the beginning, this is a little bit inconvenient, obviously, to install this plugin and create the keys. After that, everything is totally go. So not only exchanging like documents, we can exchange protected email as well. So for example, let's say now she wants to write a reply to me saying she received that document. So usually when you write an email, you know it's in the plain text format. So in the mail servers and anybody at the middle can read it. So using the same plugin, we can write encrypted email. So what you have to do is press this button, say write secure email, and type your recipient name. So your recipient is hasundisoysagmail.com. So public key of this custom design is automatically picked up from the system because I have uploaded this public key to uh, online PGP servers or a previous demo. So it's automatically picked. Then I write the message. Uh, uh, whatever I can write my confidential message. Yeah, I say thank you. And if you want to do any adjustments or change the marks or whatever, you can write it without worry because no one will see that. Uh, and I say, I can sign it 
if I wish. If I want to sign it, I press, press option button and pick my private key to be signed. And then I say encrypt. So it creates a protected email, right? So, and put it into your compose window. So then you just press send button. So as you see, it goes as encrypted form. So then a consumer can access that. I already downloaded that. Hassan can access that. So you see, it's an encrypted mail. So if you want to read that, you you have to press the mail analog plugin window. So you see, you can see the message automatically. So this is a message pop up by the plugin on top of the uh, Gmail view. So in the Gmail view, it's, you see it's in the protected format. Nobody will uh, access it. So let's say even you try to access that from a different terminal or different device, you cannot see that mail. You cannot read that mail because it's encrypted to the private key which is stored in the browser. That might be a kind of a, a disadvantage, uh, but in the security wise, it is, it is an advantage because people who has access to the same terminal can read it. So that makes sure the authenticity of the sender as well as recipient. So plus it makes sure the integrity and confidentiality of all the messages. So for example, if someone has taken your Gmail password using some man in the middle attack, and try to access your mailbox, she cannot access or she or he cannot read those because they don't have access to your private public key. They are stored in this browser. So using that browser, you can access that. You see, this is very nice feature. Simply we can use to send sign an encrypted mail. You should, and very simply, we can use the same plugin to exchange documents encrypted document where nobody will access it at the middle so even google cannot see that content so it's secure so you don't need to worry to put about user password so you can exchange any documents not only pdf word excel and so on so without doing any password protection because pgp will this plugin or the pgp will do the protection Proper protection, crypto, proper cryptographically protect, cryptographically protect your document. It's not just password protection. So as you may aware, if you protect it with just passwords, there are tools available to break it out. But if you cryptographically protect it, it's really hard to break it down. So we have this uh, tool available to do so. Then why not you use it? So it's simple to use create keys, exchange a public key, that's it. So then everything goes smooth, smooth as I demonstrated to you. So I will show you one more uh, feature provided by Google. Sometimes with using that feature, Google mislead us. So for example, there is a feature provided by Google called confidential mail. Have you seen that? So like here, turn on confidentiality mode. So that, by introducing that button, Google entirely confuse or kind of, kind of uh, mislead the community. So when I press that, it says some feature, say expire time. So I can write an email, it's automatically expired. That means this email may never exist in the recipient forever. So I can set the time frame to do so. Maybe expire in one day or expire in five years, like that. So I can immediately delete it, then it automatically expires. Uh, as soon as I delete in my mailbox, that mail will automatically, I, when I delete it from my inbox, it automatically expires from the recipient as well. That means, so when I, send an email using this Google confidentiality mail feature, 
Google may not really put that mail into the inbox of the recipient. Instead, what the Google do, they put that mail, keep that mail in the send box of the sender and send a link to the recipient to load it. So the re with the confidentiality mode, recipient may not get the buttons to forward, copy or print those emails. You can write the email to any recipient, not only Google, someone else as well, like I do now, write to Yahoo. So then whatever the recipients only receive the link. So in order to access that link, you have to get a pass, pass code. So this password can you can SMS or you can generate automatically. So the pass codes to access those emails generated by Google, not by us. So that also tells us Google can read it. Plus it's based on simple passwords. And as you may notice, that is not so convenient as well. So for example, so uh, so I so this mail receive that confidentiality mail. When I open, try to open it, Google says this is confidentiality mail. You cannot access that, and you have to press this view button. So when you press this view button, so it asks we have to request a password from Google to access that. So Google will send a separate mail then into my mailbox with that password where I have to use that password to open that document. So this number, like here, and say submit. So then I can load the message. So this content is automatically expires, plus I cannot kind of print it or whatever, forward it or whatever. So that is somewhat okay for some requirements, but it's not possible to use with attachment. Plus, it is not really the encryption. That is not really the end-to-end -end security. That Google shows us they are, they are having the feature to write the confidential messages, but it but those messages are not really the confidential messages. So if you want to use confidentiality with your email and confidentiality with the attachment, only possible method is using PGP. So, so I have demonstrated that for you. So, so I hope all of you will use PGP instead of this Google confidentiality mode, because that is mislead our end users. So that conclude this short presentation where I want to demonstrate how to use PGP to protect our end-to-end -end communication. Simply add this plugin, generate the keys, export your public key and send to your recipient and then recipient will be whatever sorry send to your sender so that parties then will be able to use your public key to send you back encrypted documents so after you generate the keys you should do some other action uh, actually you should import your private keys as well so like you uh, go to manage key button and then you pick your key pair, let's say this is public key I received, and this is, uh, so sorry, this is my public private key pair. From that actually I export uh, the public key and sends to my, uh, whatever my friends, where they would like to send me the document. And in addition to that, I have, I have to export my public private key port and save it somewhere at a secure place. Why I need to do so, in case, let's say, I want to reinstall this computer. So if I reinstall it, my KPI will be lost. So then, after that, I cannot read 
all the documents plus emails I received previously because I lost my private key. So then you need to take action not to lose your private key. How do you do so? You export your keys and save it somewhere in the secure place. Don't share all the keys, like private key, with anybody. So it's the main security point. So your private key needs to keep as secure as possible, much as possible. So entire security depends on your private key. <clears throat> you have to share only the public key. So after you share it, the system provides features to encrypt the encrypt documents. Plus, using this button to exchange signed and encrypted documents. So since all of we are now work at home, and we have the requirement of exchanging confidential documents, such as financial documents and exam results, why not you use PGP to do so instead protecting using a password? So that is very traditional and unsecure way of exchanging documents. So you have tools, please use that next time when you want to exchange confidential documents. Thank you very much for listening. And I will continually give you some security tips, security tips, which you have to follow when you work at home. Okay, thank you. This is my, this is regarding confidentiality mail. Thank you very much for listening, and I wish everybody get benefited with this knowledge and use PGP for share the confidential documents and email onwards. Thank you.